My name is Leah Campbell, and I work at the Hasakawa Micron Powder Systems in Summit, New Jersey. I'm the product specialist for the Laboratory Equipment Group. Today, we'll be talking about the Micro Airjet Sieve MAGS-X in the advanced mode. The Micro Airjet Sieve is used to determine particle sizes ranging from 20 microns to 4,750 microns. It's used in application areas such as pharmaceutical, chemical, mineral, cosmetic, and food. Our air jet sieve is designed with a touchscreen integrated computer and is also designed to accept um, different size sieve screens, 200 mm and 203 mm. During this educational demonstration today, we will be running the air jet sieve with the cyclone. The cyclone is optional um, and it does collect anything 10 microns and higher for further analyzation. The most important thing about a sieve screen is the integrity. It cannot have any mars, dents, or wavy screens. This will skew your results. Before this device is operated, you should read the operating manual and you should follow your company's safety precautions. Now that the unit is set up, the next step is to turn on the components. You want to make sure that the balance is powered on and that the vacuum is plugged into the back of the air jet sieve with the power switch in the on position. These two components must be turned on and plugged in before we start up the air jet sieve. After those two components are powered on, the next step, we're going to turn on the air jet sieve. And by, to do that, you're just going to flip the switch on the back of the unit to the on position. Once the software is uploaded, two windows will appear. The first window is an info window, and this is just saying that the scale has been detected by the air jet sieve. In order to proceed, you're going to press OK. The next window is just another info window that's stating the last test session has been restored. Again, to proceed, press OK. After the info windows have appeared and you've selected OK, the next screen displayed is the setup. Here it lists the company, operator, sample, lot number, test number, and the date and time for this analysis that you're performing. As of right now, you can see that these cells are shaded gray. That means none of this information can be changed. In order to change this information, the operator must push either one of these three buttons. Repeat test, which means the operator can repeat the test that they just previously did, and they can change whatever information they need in this cell or in the next screen. Load preset, the operator can load a test that was previously saved on the computer. Or clear data, this will wipe out the entire, all these cells and you can enter new information. We're going to repeat test. All current unsaved test data will be lost. Select OK. Now, from here, if you need to change any of this information, you just select the cell that needs to be changed. And a keyboard will appear. Once you type in the correct information, you select Done. And you continue doing that for the rest of the cells. Now, the operator can choose what kind of sample they want to use. They can choose a new sample. A new sample is they would put a new sample of powder on each sieb screen throughout the analysis. Or if there's uh, testing for retained, you're going to select, you're going to um, push the new button and that will activate the reuse. Reuse is using the sample that was retained on the sieb screen. You transfer it from one sieb screen to another. We're going to test reuse today. And the next thing that the operator has to decide is the percent mode, whether they want it passed or retained. Retained will measure the percent of the sample that's retained on the SIV screen. Pass will measure the percent that was passed through the SIV screen. Today we're going to measure pass. Next up, we're going to go to the screen page. Now we're going to select the SIVs that we will be using during the analysis. In order to get rid of a sieve screen, we're going to push the minus button. That will delete the last sieve screen listed. So if you have five sieve screens listed and you want the third one listed, you're going to have to delete the last two before you get to that third one. If you want to add sieve screen, you're going to press the plus button. Then once you press this, a screen like this, this is the test sieve selection chart, will appear. In order to scroll through it, you're going to press up or down and scroll. In order to change this last sieb screen listed here, you have to select that. And then you can, again, scroll up or down and choose the sieb screen that you require for the analysis. 
If you have a custom sieve screen that's non-ASTM, you can still enter it. You select custom sieve screen and you enter in the micron size or the mesh size. Here you'll see that there are two selected sieve screens. You can add as many sieve screens as you need to this analysis. Because the screen is so small though, it will not list all of them. You will not see all of them listed, so it shows you here how many screens are selected. Once you have your sieve screen selected, we're going to move on to the testing page. Before pressing begin on the testing page, we're going to discuss the different columns that are listed here. Micron and mesh size. It's very important that you know and your operator for this machine knows that this software will list the sieve screens from finest to coarsest. This is because we want to remove all the fines first so that eliminates any cohesion, agglomeration that can skew your results. Sieving time. We suggest 120 seconds or two minutes. This is so that the powder can be evenly dispersed across the sieve screen and it'll have a chance whatever smaller or finer than the sieve screen you're using will fall through. Whatever's coarse will, will stay retained on the sieve screen. Sieving pressure. We suggest anywhere from 8 to 16 inches of water. Um, for this test, we're going to run it at 12. Now that we entered the sieving time and the sieving pressure, we're going to press begin to begin the analysis. What's nice about the software, it will literally give you step-by-step -step instructions. First step, place the 45 micron screen on the scale. The scale will then communicate to the air jet sieve and the weight that the screen is will appear on the window. Press next. Place the sample on the 45 micron sieve screen. Today we're, doing, we're using a food powder. That's why I'm not in a hazard suit or anything like that. And we normally suggest anywhere from 10 to 15 grams on a sieve screen for your sample, all depending on the material that you're using. Today we're going to be using around 12 grams. Again, the scale will communicate with the sieves or with the air jet sieve, and you're going to press next. From here, it says place the 45 micron sieve screen with the sample on the sieve. We're going to put the lid on top of it, and then we're going to press next. After that, it's ready to sieve, and you're going to press start. Once the sieving is completed, you're going to press next. Then the software will indicate the next step for you. Place the 45 micron screen with the sample on the scale. So we're going to remove the lid and we're going to dust off any extra material we might have gotten due to static charge on the lid. Place the sieve with the sample because we are testing for um, retained onto the scale. Again, the scale is communicating with the air jet sieve. Once the number registers in this little cell as, and it matches the one on the scale, we can press next. Then it's saying place the 53 micron screen on the scale. So we're going to remove this one, let the scale go back down to zero, and place the next screen in our analysis on the scale. Again, once it communicates and registers the proper weight, we're going to press next. We're going to place the sieve screen onto the, onto the um, air jet sieve itself, and we're going to transfer the retained sample onto this screen. And then we're going to press next. We're going to place the lid back on the air jet sieve and we're going to press start. <laughs> the
the sieving's completed. Once it's completed, we're going to press next. And then it says place the 55 micron screen with the sample on the scale. Once the scale communicates with the air jet save, you're going to press next. And testing is completed. From here, we're going to move to the report page. Once coming to the report page, you'll see here the graph report, which you'll see also on a larger scale once the results are printed out. Here it shows the screen to use listed from finest course again, along with the test results. Here, if you wanted to print the results, you can select print. And it will send um, almost like a signal to the printer and it will print out the test results, which we'll see in a minute. And you can also save these results. When you press save, these results will be saved under the company name, operator, sample, and lot number that you had entered on the first page, on the setup page. Here's when operator wanted to load a pre, uh, an already saved test, they can load it here by pressing load and it will bring up an old test and you can look at the results there. Now that the results have been printed, I wanted to go over the printout with you so that you and the operator understand what you're looking at when you get the printout. Up top, you have the company, operator, sample mode, percent mode, sample, and lot number. This is all the information that you had entered on the setup page in the very beginning of the analysis. Here, this chart, it has the sieve screens in microns. Please note that these sieve screens are in micron and that the mesh size is not listed here. We have the sieving time, which we entered as 120 seconds. We have the vacuum pressure. This is the average vacuum pressure that was throughout the entire 20, 120 seconds of sieving. We have the before weight. And then we have the after weight. The before weight, obviously, for each um, sieve screen that was used, and then after is re weighed. And then we have the percent passing and the percent difference. Here we have a graph. This graph is um, in Lin Log. For those of you users who like to use Rosin Rambler, this is a time where you can go back in the, in the settings and you can enter in your. D10, D50, D97, or whatever you're looking for, and print out the Rosin Rambler graph. Thank you for watching this educational video. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.